Welcome to Basketball Cinema, where we revisit the most important and iconic games in NBA history. I'm Jay Canada, and today we're looking at Game 7 of the 2021 East Semi-Final between the Milwaukee Bucks and Brooklyn Nets. This right here is the culmination of our series on Basketball Cinema, looking at failed NBA super teams. We began the series looking at the late 90s Houston Rockets, before stopping in with the early 2000s LA Lakers. Last week, we saw the big three Miami Heat with LeBron's 2011 Finals performance, which like, I literally can't. While today we see a Brooklyn Nets super team led by Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant. Nailed it. As I've discussed throughout this series, a super team can't always be defined the same way. There isn't some specific criteria. To me, I believe it's a combination of on-paper talent and accolades combined with a certain feel you get about the team's roster. Kind of like Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Don't try to understand it. Just feel it. In the case of the 2021 Nets, however, it was a blend of feel and hard effort evidence. Their big three of Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving has a combined 27 All-Star appearances, 19 All-NBA nods, 7 scoring titles, and 2 MVPs. Super. In addition, it's not insane to say it's the most talented collection of players we've ever seen on one NBA roster. The 1980s Celtics with Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish were dominant. The Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, as well as the Shaq, Kobe dynamic duos never had a true third superstar. The LeBron, Wade, Bosch, Heat, and Curry Durant Thompson Warriors have a case, but in my honest opinion, in terms of standalone ability, this Nets Big 3 is the most game-changing, overpowered offensive trio we've ever seen. To that end, the Nets were tagged by nearly every NBA-adjacent voice to have a spot in the 2021 NBA Finals. But it would be very shameful and very problematic for this team if they did not come out of the Eastern Conference. I can tell you that. That would be bad. Unfortunately for Brooklyn, though, they learned of the true double-edged sword nature of creating a super team. That second edge being injury. As after playing in just 44 of the Nets' 72 regular season games, James Harden would suffer a hamstring injury in Game 1 against Milwaukee, returning later in the series a shell of his elite self. Additionally, after a reasonably durable regular season, Kyrie Irving would be felled by an ankle injury in Game 4 against the Bucks, leaving him unavailable for games 5, 6, and 7. Now, is it fair to include the Nets in a failed super team series when injuries helped cause their demise? Maybe not, but sacrificing depth in exchange for star power opens the door to having a promising run tanked by injury. Again, it's a double-edged sword. But the injuries to Irving and Harden didn't tank the super team Nets. In fact, game 7 versus the Bucks would prove to be one of the most wonderfully wild and wacky games in recent playoff history. Here, I'll show you. The game began with Drew Holiday looking like a last minute Christmas shopper on December 24th, getting caught between two items before settling on something nobody likes. Hope you got a gift receipt on that one, my guy. As had become the trend during this series, the Nets offense was initially unlocked by the man wearing number seven. First, a rhythm pull-up jumper with a pair of defenders surrounding him, then a casual pull-up off bounce from 26 feet out, giving KD an early five points. We last saw Kevin Durant here on Basketball Cinema in a Warriors jersey as his teammate Klay Thompson was torching Indiana for 60 points. During the intervening years, KD would go on to win a pair of NBA championships and finals MVP trophies with Golden State in 2017 and 18. However, during the 2019 playoffs, Durant would tear his Achilles, forcing him to miss the entire 2019-20 season. The injury raised some valid concerns about Durant's future, as did his choosing to sign with Brooklyn. Kevin Durant just made a huge mistake to me. No, he didn't, bruh. After spending a season rehabbing his leg, Durant returned to play in 35 games during the 2021 season, averaging a sparkling 27.7 rebounds and 6 assists per game. Coming into this Game 7, KD was scoring over 33 points a game on 52% shooting in the playoffs. That's not bad. Trying to ease the burden even a touch for Durant was his fellow All-Star running mate, as James Harden drew a risky foul on Giannis on a 3-point attempt, finding himself in a very familiar position, knocking down three straight from the stripe. As mentioned earlier, Harden was personifying the term gutting it out this series, as he was limping around the court on a beat up hamstring for the final three games of the series. We last saw Harden here on the channel way back in 2013, when he took on his former friend turned foe Kevin Durant in the playoffs as a member of the Houston Rockets. Of course, Harden and Durant would become teammates again, so I, I guess their friends turned foes turned friends again. Trust me, it makes sense. Harden arrived in Brooklyn in the early part of the 21 season by way of trade from Houston. As most of you probably remember, Harden had requested a trade, then showed up late and out of shape to training camp before sleepwalking through nine games to force the Rockets' hand. That's some super suspicious behavior. 
The Harden trade will go down as an all-time robbery in NBA history, as the Rockets got a bucket load of what will be late first round draft picks and not much else. Third net starter on the board early to give him an early five point lead, as Joe Harris was left wide open in transition and connected on a triple. We finally get a chance to officially meet the Nets opposition in this game. As for Milwaukee, Giannis made a rare three of his own following an offensive rebound. Moments later, it was Holiday with a nifty move from the perimeter to eventually scoop and score with his left hand. The Bucks finished third in the East in 2021, and were led by a slightly less intimidating on paper trio of Giannis on Dedekumpo, Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday. The last time we saw all three of these champs was, well, I don't want to spoil anything in case you've been sleeping for like a, a few months, but you can check the video I'm referencing out right, right up there or up there, whatever side it's on. The Bucks had rolled past the heat in a round one sweep and coinciding with injuries to Harden and Irving had clawed back from a two nothing series deficit to force this game seven. Two time league MVP Giannis was in the midst of carving out his own mythical playoff run. 33 points, 14 rebounds per game in the previous four games of this series. Those are grown man numbers. Aw, oh, look at Steve Nash cuddling his superstar following game five. That's nice. Bruce Brown with a little floater from the lane, but the aforementioned grown man with a quick response, and one on the drive for Giannis over Blake Griffin. Man, I swear Giannis is the most unconventional superstar I've ever seen. His initial look on the drive to the lane was cut off, so he backed out to just beyond the free throw line, hesitated, and put up a jumper. So awkward, but so effective. James Harden actually had seven points in the opening frame, all from the free throw line as he knocked down another pair. Middleton with his first hoop of the game, easily working past Harden before floating in a deuce. For all his grown manness, Giannis drew a whistle for a truly ridiculous technical foul here on Bruce Brown. I mean, Bruce is half his size. Yeah, that's how I feel too, Bruce. With the game now tied at 20, Giannis was able to track down an air ball rebound, putting it back up and in plus the foul. But more KD to close the first quarter. A wild attempt as he tried to draw a foul. No whistle, but he did get a bucket. Then he worked Holiday again, this time turning over his right shoulder and banking. The Nets led by three after a quarter, 10-3-2 in the quarter for Durant alone. Some illuminating insight from Coach Bud when asked how he planned to manage Giannis's minutes in Game 7. Yeah, we'll play him as much as we need him. Yeah, yeah, okay, M makes sense. Kevin Durant keeping things rolling in the second quarter. Here's Durant for three. And after a great hustle play next time down from Bruce Brown, Blake Griffin would connect on an open three to extend the Nets lead to nine. Brooke Lopez getting busy for the Bucks, tipping home a PJ Tucker miss on the inside, then hitting on a wide open three from the near corner on the assist from Chris Middleton. Those baskets though were sandwiched around a gnarly finish from Bruce Brown over Giannis? Then Brown with another nice play made, a push shot from the lane over Lopez. Bruce Brown had become a truly unlikely low-key hero for the Nets in 2021. Thanks to the ongoing injury issues in Brooklyn, the former Pistons started 37 games in the regular season as well five of the seven games in this Milwaukee series, including game seven. If you know me, you know I love a good wonky stat line. And at just six foot four inches, Brown averaged over five rebounds per game during the playoffs and had four offensive rebounds in this game alone. The Nets defensive strategy against Giannis was showing some warts, as when the G-man drove, he was surrounded by four black jerseys, leaving Pat Connaughton wide open for a warm-up three. <laughs> Look at PJ Tucker's reaction to Blake Griffin flopping on this play. So subtle, yet so sassy. James Harden finally getting his first field goal of the game after taking a nice feed from Griffin under the rim. Just watch this shot from Kevin Durant. Jeff Green has come on for the first time for the next one. Three as he throws it. I mean, how did he do that? I guess his shot next time down was slightly easier as he converted a runner over Tucker. Continuing to battle through the pain, James Harden taking a hit and putting it home to give the Nets a 10 point lead. Milwaukee with an answer to end the half though. Giannis going to four for eight from the line after making a pair. He then took a beautiful inbounds lob from Drew Holiday for the slam and it was a six point game at the half. Looking at the first half stats from this game, stinky. Middleton and Holiday trying to sell the bread, man. The Bucks did start the second half on a roll, as it was more Giannis, with a confident elbow pull-up from 14 feet out. PJ Tucker was then left wide open in the corner, where the man literally lives on offense. Uh, of course it was money. Giannis with a tough finish at the rim, and even Middleton getting involved with a deep bomb to give the Bucks a lead. But that action was instantaneously responded to by a cyborg assassin wearing black and white. First KD contorting his body in the lane for two. Then he took a hit from PJ Tucker on a jumper, he'd make a pair from the free throw line, and he'd be Bach for more. 
Coming off a pin screen, taking the feed from James Harden, I mean, that's just too good. Kevin Durant being a Terminator level, unstoppable scorer in the NBA is nothing new to fans. As from 2009 through 2014, KD won four of a possible five scoring titles. But again, I feel the need to emphasize that at 32 years of age, Durant was no longer a spring chicken when he was felled by the catastrophic Achilles injury. Additionally, if there was the thought KD could coast in his situation with the super team Nets, well, that thought didn't last long. The injuries to Harden and Irving left Durant basically to himself and he responded all series against the Bucks as he'd averaged 37 points a game in 45 minutes per game after game two. The brother is unguardable. He is lethal. I told you years ago, Giannis didn't even belong in the same sentence as him. Unfortunately for the Nets, Joe Harris, AKA Beef Jerky Joe, amazing, had really run cold at this point in the playoffs. The former teammate of LeBron in Cleveland had led the NBA in three-point shooting in two of the previous three seasons, but dipped below 33% in the series when he had a real shot at being the X factor for Brooklyn. A fun Blake Griffin renaissance at this moment in the third quarter. First taking a feed from Harden on the perimeter and hitting a three from the wing. Then he took a feed from Harden and drove all the way off the line and to the rack. Back and forth run between the teams. Brooke Lopez with a deep look from the corner. Jan is blowing around Durant for the right-handed lay. Harden with his first three-point make of the game on a patented step back. Durant took a hard hit this time from PJ Tucker. Again, he'd make a pair from the stripe, but Jan is muscling to the rim once again with the answer. With Brooklyn up two, Chris Middleton tracking down an O-board and finishing for two. Then to take the lead, Jan is on a clean dime from Holiday, finishing strong with his left hand plus the foul. Durant operating his way to the rim for a late bucket, and we had a two-point game heading into to the fourth quarter. James Harden with a nice finish to begin the fourth, but that was quickly answered by Middleton who went glass for two. Blake continuing to make an impact for the Nets, connecting on a wide open look from the corner. Giannis another unconventional play, this time rocking into a pull up from a step inside the paint. Joe Harris finally getting a roll to go on a deep attempt, but Chris Middleton had officially begun to heat up. Another make for two. Okay, so we had Harden, Balake, and Harris all score for the Nets in the fourth. I, I think it might be time for some KD, like, like a lot of KD. First, the two time finals MVP pulling up in rhythm over Brook Lopez from the wing. Middleton in short order with a reply on a tough mid-range jumper of his own. Nets up two, this was a wild sequence. We're looking at 34 points, nine rebounds. Durant had it knocked away, thought he was fouled, does not get the call, let's get it back. Durant on the court! That's a big time finish from KD2. He was up to 37 points on the game. Drew, like so many holiday figures before him, making an appearance for the first time in like a year, hitting a shot after starting the game just two for 17 from the field. Two more freebies for Durant next time down. But the answer to that was Giannis once again, as he put Jeff Green in a spin cycle. Oh yeah, Je Jeff Green played 13 scoreless minutes in this game. So that's fun. Watch this ridiculous bailout for the Nets. Hobbling Harden was blanketed by Middleton, but with the shot clock winding down, he was able to hoist one off glass for a three. Durant finally missed an attempt here in the fourth, and the freak was quick to answer. An acrobatic and one finish off the feed from Drew. He'd missed the free throw, but great work from Connaughton on the glass leading to... Here's Holiday for two. My guy had finally woken up. Durant this time giving Middleton the work, stopping on a dime and pulling up for two. Holiday with yet another gift for the Bucks, a midi of his own fading to his right. But of course it was an instant return serve from KD as he darted to the rim and around traffic for another bucket. Holiday found himself at the free throw line where he'd split a pair. Nets back with possession and after some solid initial defense from PJ Tucker on Durant, Middleton was able to help depossess the Nets star. Huge stop for Milwaukee. In the bonus, Chris was sent to the line where he was all but automatic, converting on both to give the Bucks a four point cushion. PJ Tucker with more solid defense as Durant searched for his shot to cut into the lead. KD missed, but the Nets kept possession. And fakes Tucker. And the out of two with 42 seconds for the Talk about a guy getting to his shot. Just masterwork right there from KD. The Bucks a chance to finalize a game seven victory. Middleton would drain the clock. Got a decent look off, but missed. However, the Nets were unable to secure the board an absolute killer. Milwaukee though, with one of the more baffling plays I've ever seen in recent memory. Giving the ball to Brooke Lopez buried in the corner with the shot clock expiring. Although, you know, it, it's not often the little details in a game really come back to hurt you in the end. So, so I wouldn't worry about it, Milwaukee. Gets it into Durant. 
There is Durant moving on Tucker. He turns. He shoots. Yes! With one second remaining. Uh, okay. No, can we scratch that? N no. I take it back. A truly all-world shot from Kevin Durant with absolute ice in his veins. But the buzzkill of all buzzkills, as Katie's feet were half a size too large and his toes were on the line, meaning tie game, overtime, game seven. Yeah, sorry Nets fans. Brooklyn was able to start OT with a burst of energy. From the earlier raved about Bruce Brown, tracking down a rebound and putting it back for two. Unfortunately, the magic finally ran out for Kevin Durant in the extra frame. After scoring 48 points in 48 regulation minutes, Durant would miss on a free throw line pull up on his first OT attempt. James Harden had been a non-factor down the stretch. He missed on a step back triple. Still up to Durant missing a shot clock buzzer beating heave. Following another O board, Kevin on the drive was clamped by Brook Lopez and unable to convert. After another O board, Blake Griffin would come up short on an interior attempt for the Nets. Drew Holiday got a super clean look from the mid-range for Milwaukee, so like, does anybody want to score or... PJ Tucker was right in the middle of stuff all night, but a really silly play here as he fouled out. The Nets couldn't capitalize, however, as Harden missed left on a clean look at a three. With under 90 seconds remaining in OT, Giannis touched the ball for the first time in the extra frame, taking it at Blake Griffin, fouling him out, Giannis would touch the ball a second time, playing bully ball once again on Durant, and mercifully giving us another bucket in this game. There's Durant, blocked by Lopez, comes to Harris, who fires, and he's off, rebounded Lopez. The low-key play of the game made by former net Brooke Lopez. What a freaking block, man. And to match that clutch defensive play on the other end, it was Chris Middleton with a cold-blooded play offensively, spinning and splashing from the mid-range. Kevin Durant had a great look on the ensuing possession, but clearly fatigue had caught up with the net star as he came up short. Brooklyn was able to contest Middleton tightly to force a miss with 14 seconds remaining, meaning Durant and the Nets had one final chance to get those giant toes behind the line. Bottled by Holloway. Durant. For three, comes up with an air ball. Oh man, and his toe was actually on the line again. Could you imagine if he hit the exact same shot with the toe on the line twice? In any event, that was the final shot, literally for the 2021 Brooklyn Nets. Decimated by injury, Kevin Durant was pressed into playing a full 53 minutes in which he scored 48 points to go along with nine rebounds and six assists, but it wasn't enough. Love him or hate him, this was an unbelievably admirable performance in a losing effort by Kevin Durant. For as much as I was able to justify including the 2021 Brooklyn Nets in this series of failed NBA super teams, because they did fail and they were a super team, like the 2011 Miami Heat who we discussed last week, it's not a good idea to count this Nets roster down and out just yet. Heading into the 2021-22 season, the Nets project to have a healthy and rested core which still includes Durant, Harden, and Irving, and again, we know the magnitude of their combined resume. Additionally, the Nets were able to maneuver the salary cap with savvy and add a slew of promising depth pieces. Patty Mills, Paul Millsap, and LaMarcus Aldridge, while retaining Joe Harris, Blake Griffin, and Bruce Brown? Now what the- how did- this roster- how- how did they do- <laughs> This video is obviously not the time or place to discuss the various issues and question marks surrounding Kyrie Irving with regards to vaccinations and his potential availability during the season. It's all still very much up in the air and Kyrie has time and again proven to be fairly unpredictable in nature. But even if the Nets do lose their star point guard, a team led by Kevin Durant, James Harden, and an improved supply of depth, it's hard to imagine them being a failed super team for a second straight season. For each game covered here on Basketball Cinema, I'll be giving out three awards, beginning with the Clint Hawkeye Barton Award for Most Underrated Performer. I don't care. Which goes to Blake Griffin. Usually for this award, I nominate a player from the winning team, but today I have to give another shout to Balake. He finished with 17 points, 11 rebounds on 7 of 12 shooting in this game. It was low-key one of his most important playoff performances ever, albeit in a losing effort. The Rick Dalton. Oh, oh. Award for most recognizable moment goes to Kevin Durant's giant shoe. Instantly iconic in a sad way, at least for Nets fans, was a screenshot of the eventual ruling that KD did have a couple toes on the line for what would have been a game winner for the ages in Game 7. And finally, the Mark Jackson, with all due respect, award for weirdest moment in this game goes to probably the most random group of celebrities I've ever seen featured by the broadcast on an NBA game. I'm talking Travis Scott, Mark Messier, you, Aaron Judge, and Eli Manning. Amazing. And that's it. The Milwaukee Bucks beat the Brooklyn Nets 115-111 on June 19th, 
2021. As we know, Giannis and the Bucks would roll through to the NBA Finals, eventually winning a ring. If you enjoyed this episode of the show, please consider dropping a like down below. And if you can see yourself watching, you know, a few more of these in the future, I'd suggest hitting that subscribe button as well and leave me a comment on anything you saw from this video. Next week, we'll take a look at yet another iconic NBA game, including Kevin Durant. But, but this one features KD on one of his former teams. Also, he was playing against one of his former teams. Wait a minute. I just... Yeah, KD's career can be very confusing. But until that one, I'm Jay Canada, and this has been Basketball Cinema. Thank you for watching another episode of Basketball Cinema. For uh, everyone who's supporting this channel, it means a lot. We just finished up another series here. Failed NBA super teams. I, I came up with the idea, thought it was fun, and honestly, it was looking at some of these teams and how they failed. Not sure exactly what's next for the channel. Well, I know next week, but after that, who knows? So leave me some suggestions for games you might like to see, and also tell your friends about this channel. I want more subscribers, okay? There, I said it. Okay, well, that's all I got to say. I just embarrassed myself. Whatever.